Social Anarchism and Organization. Translator's Introduction. This document, first published in Portuguese under the title Anarchismo Social e Organizacional, and adopted at the first Congress of the Federacional Anarquista do Rio de Janeiro in August 2008, seeks to map out the Farge's theoretical conception of an organized class, of class struggle anarchism and more than purely theoretical document reflects the conclusions realized after five years of practical application of anarchism in social struggles of our people. In it, the Farge traces its historical and organizational roots through the militant histories of Carioca, Anarchists such as Ideal Perez, who struggled to keep the flame of anarchism alight during the dark days of dictatorship, to militants such as his father, Juan Perez Busas, Galician immigrant anarchist who participated decisively in the Battle of Say in 1934. Quote, when the anarchists rejected the integralistas under bursts of machine gun fire, end quote. In what is perhaps one of the most comprehensive elaborations on the Latin American cons concept of especifista anarchism now available in English, social anarchism and organization traces and outlines the theoretical and practical influences on the Farge's conception of anarchist organization and its strategy for social transformation. It advocates a conception of anarchism that divides anarchist activity into two levels of activity, the social, social or mass movement, and political, specific anarchist organization, arguing that this dual organizationalist approach to anarchist organization is consistent with and can be traced back to the ideas and practices of Bakunin himself in the Alliance of Socialist Democracy. The Farge traces this common political lineage back to Bakunin through the experiences of the Federación Anarquista Uruguaya and those of the 1918 Alianza Anarquista and 1919 Partido Comunista, libertarian in content. Through the experience of the Magonistas during the Mexican Revolution, and the radical phases of the Partido Liberal Mexicano, through the experiences of the Federación Anarquista Ibérica and Friends of Duruti Group during the Spanish Revolution, and those of the authors of the organizational platform of the Libertarian Communists, to those of Erico Malatesta and his conception of the Anarchist Party. Drawing from the experience of the loss of what is what it terms the social vector of anarchism, anarchism's social influence at the end of the glorious period of anarchism, the Farge advocates the need for a specific anarchist organization, tightly organized, comprising highly committed militants, sharing high levels of theoretical and strategic unity that through participating in and supporting popular movements and struggles against exploitation and domination, seeks to influence these movements with anarchist principles and in a revolutionary and libertarian direction. The final objective thereof being the recapturing of the social vector of anarchism as a necessary step towards the introduction of libertarian socialism by means of social revolution. In seeking to increase the social influence of anarchism, the Farge reasserts the need for an anarchism to come increasingly into contact with the exploited classes, thus identifying the class struggle as the most important and fertile terrain in which to attempt to spread anarchist principles and practices. For these to take root, however, it is essential for organized anarchists to carry out permanent and consistent propaganda, organizational and educational work within the movements and organizations of the exploited class, and, critically for the Farge, to always act in a manner consistent with what it terms a militant ethic. 
Social Anarchism and Organization outlines the Farge's conception of the various tasks of the specific anarchist organization, as well as its structure, processes for attracting new members, and its orientation towards social movements, all according to the logic of concentric circles. In formulating strategic answers to the questions, where are we, where do we want to go, and how do we think we can leave where we are and arrive at where we want to be, Social Anarchism and Organization articulates the Farge's understanding of social classes under the society of exploitation and domination, capitalism and state, as well as its final objectives, social revolution and libertarian socialism, and how these may look. In so doing, it explains the Farge's conception of the popular organization, which uniting social movements struggling for freedom and accumulating the experiences and gains made in the daily class struggle would rather than representing the simple sum of the forces of isolated social movements constitute a far greater social force that at the moment in which it becomes greater than that of the state and capital should make a decisive break with the current system and using violence as a necessary response to violence of the state and capital initiate the transition to libertarian socialism by means of social revolution. Since initial publication of this document, however, the Farge has taken to using the term popular power as a substitute for the popular organization and has further developed its understanding of this concept so central to especifismo. In the more than three years since adoption of this document, the Farge has undergone a number of theoretical developments, such as deepening its conception of class based on the category of domination, while considering economic class as one kind of domination. New research and understanding of the history of Brazilian anarchism in the decades of the 1940s and 1950s. Theory and method of analysis and the deepening of some topics on anarchist organization. There have also been some practical developments, including the development of social work, with the following movements, grassroots, unemployed workers movement, landless movement, popular councils movement, and participation in the creation of a popular organization tendency. Although this document, located within a, popul within a particular Latin American context, was first published and adopted over three years before this translation, it remains an insightful and instructive contribution to global contemporary anarchist theory and practice, relevant to anyone committed to finding in anarchist praxis the most suitable response to the question, how do we think we can leave where we are and arrive at where we want to be? I hope this translation does it justice. Jonathan Payne, Johannesburg, March 2012. Social Anarchism and Organization, Part 1, the context of the 2008 Congress and the debate about organization. To theorize effectively, it is essential to act. Uruguayan Anarchist Federation. The first Congress of the Farge was held with the principal objective of deepening our reflections on the question of organization and formalizing them into a program. Since 2003, the debate around organization has been taking place within our organization. We had produced theoretical materials, developed our thinking, learned from the successes and mistakes of our political practice, and it was becoming increasingly necessary to further the debate and to formalize it, spreading this knowledge both internally and externally. The practical work of our two fronts, occupations and community, was absolutely central to the theoretical reflections that we made in this period. It even contributed to the creation of our third front in the early 2008, the agroecological front called Anarchism and Nature. One year ago, we decided to have a debate around organization in necessary depth, 
with the aim of formalizing the conclusions into a document that would be validated at the 2008 Congress. For this reason, still in 2007, we took some actions to contribute to the necessary theoretical maturity that would be essential to this path we wanted to take. Activation of the Political Education Secretary, carrying out of internal education seminars, development of education handbooks for militants. These actions sought to give to each militant of our organization the structure, space, and necessary support so that this debate would be able to take place in the most desirable way possible. We made a great effort to read, write, debate, revisit materials already written, deepen discussions, make clarifications, in sum, to plan in the fullest we thought necessary for this debate. However, we did not only want to provide a forum for debate, we wanted to reach more conclusive positions or deepen the political line of the organization. As one of the features of our organizational model is theoretical and ideological unity, we wanted to use this time for the deepening of certain theoretical and ideological questions and ultimately arrive at concrete positions to be defined and disseminated by the whole organization. In these five years, we had always thought that in order to develop a political line, we necessarily need to think of the mutual influence that exists between theory and practice, since we consider them inseparable. When both interact reciprocally and in a positive way, they enhance the results of all the work of the organization. With good theory, you improve practice. With good practice, you improve theory. There is no way to conceive the anarchist organization as with only theory and no practice, or even developing a theory and trying to completely adapt the practice to it. From the beginning, we thought it would be fundamental not to construct an organization that, distant from struggles, writes documents and then goes into practice with the objective of adapting it to the theory. Likewise, it never appeared possible to us to conceive anarchist organization with only practice but no theory, or even assuming a theory as theory everything that happens in practice. We always sought a balance that, on the one hand, did not have as an object, it did not have as an objective to theorize deeply in order to begin acting and, on the other, sought to ensure that the action was in line with the theory, which, in our understanding, strengthens the, the result of militants, without, of militants' efforts without a necessary loss of energy. In this debate, which took place in the last two years, and which is formalized in this document, we desired to develop a proper theory there was not simply a repetition of other theories developed in other places and at other times. Obviously, our whole theory is imbued from beginning to end with other theories and of other authors that lived and acted in other contexts. It would be impossible to conceive of a consistent anarchist theory without the contribution of the classical anarchists, for example. However, we made a point of having a long reflection on these, the theories and thoughts of these authors, and whether they make sense in our context today. We seek to create, a proper, to create proper concepts, aiming to give original character to the theory that we wanted to create. And in this endeavor, we think we have been very successful, as we, in our view, construct and formalize a coherent theory, articulating classical and contemporary theories as well as our own conceptions. Nevertheless, we do not believe that this, is a definition, that this is a definitive theory. Many aspects could be improved. Lastly, the most important thing is to make it clear that we think we are taking the first steps along this path we wish to follow. Finally, we desired to build the dis this discussion and its formalization in a collective manner. It is not enough for us 
that one or another comrade writes all the theory of the organization and that others simply observe and follow their positions. It was because of this that we sought throughout this period to consider all the positions of the organization and not just of one militant or another. This too, in our view, adds value to the text. It does not come from the head of one or another intellectual that thinks of politics detached from reality, but on the contrary is the result of five years of struggle and organization of anarchism in permanent context with the struggles of our time, seeking a revolutionary social transformation towards libertarian socialism. In sum, it is the result of five years of practical activity. With the purpose of contributing one more step, of formalizing theoretically that which has accumulated in our short history, we held the first Congress, which occurred in conjunction with the commemoration of five years of the Farge. On 30th and 31st of August, 2008, the main reflections of which are recorded below. Ethics, commitment, freedom.